The year is 2024, and if you have seen anything on the internet, then you know that state belongs on the back end. You've heard it, you've read it, and most of you are already thinking HTMX. So let's use it in our next project. But what problem does it solve? Oh shoot, does it solve a problem we have? Come to think of it, I'm not quite sure I've seen anyone talking about the issue at hand recently, honestly. And yes, I think that the statement, state belongs on the back end, is either straight up wrong or misleading at best. To be completely honest with you, the first time I heard this, state belongs on the back end, I thought it was coming from someone recovering from Web9 addiction. I did not think it was an actual serious statement and thought it was made either for the memes or due to illicit drug usage. If you spend more than half a second thinking about it, services and whatever backing database you have is the de facto place you store your information, your, your state. So to me, this seems like a stupid statement to make. Of course your services store their state on the back end. I don't, I don't think anyone would argue this. And my problem with this is that sadly it takes a statement that everyone would agree with and uses it to push a separate narrative. I hate to break it to you, but the issue HTMX tries to solve is not state management. And here is the crux of the problem. I can't tell you what I think about HTMX if we don't understand what it's solving. And if we don't know what it solves, how can we really know if it solves it well? And I'm going to argue that the issue it tries to solve is latency. So you do understand the benefits. Not only the benefits, but more importantly, the trade-offs. Well, if you said HTMX was about storing state on the back end, and if you have tweeted that, I'm going to contend that you are wrong. In fact, I think the real issue is summarized really well by intercooler.js. If you don't know who that is, don't worry, it will be clear in just a bit, I promise. So join me in a bit of a story. The year was 2016. The month was February and the day was the 17th. It was probably raining and cold and intercooler.js released a blog post articulating the following issue. Heavy client-side logic requires a trade-off between API turn or an increasingly complex security model. This is only half of the truth, and without fundamental understanding of API design and how the internet works, it would be impossible to understand why this statement is true. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You wanted to know about state belonging on the back end? I mean, at the absolute best, it is as tangential to the conversation as my second cousin's thrice removed step parents' pet dogs relate to lemurs. They both can get fleas. So let's move on from state belongs on the back end. We will discuss when and where it comes into the picture, but that's it quite a bit later. Before we can just understand Intercooler's JS blog post, you have to first understand that good, pure, honest REST endpoints are absolutely terrible, no good front-end APIs. Well, 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 kind of. There are actually quite a few issues, like a lot of front-end developers are lazy and don't want to learn the back-end APIs, and then a lot of back-end developers are lazy and don't want to publish API specs that the front-end developers could use to learn the back-end APIs. Well, let's be real, nobody wants this drama. I'm not making this video to delve into how to motivate your teams to do the right thing here, because this is not the only issue. There is a bigger technical issue than teamwork, one that can't be avoided by good hiring practices, teamwork, and how you structure your teams. A pure data API might look something like this. And then the issue is you might be required to make several independent calls to obtain the information we want to display on the page. Even worse, you might be forced to chain the calls to obtain the right information to display. And if the latency is high, this could provide a terrible, no good user experience, making them wait a long time for the page load. For example, using this API, if we wanted to make this dashboard here, we would have to chain these three calls as we would need information from the first to call the second, meaning one call after the other. Honestly, it's also a lot of work to manage all of this on the front end, but it has further reaching implications. One of them is latency. If you want to make your website feel snappy and responsive, you don't want to take two seconds to get the data that the user requested. And then you request more when you get that data to get more data. What if they live in the foothills of the Alps and your server runs in US West 2? First off, don't put stuff in US West 2. Don't do it. But second, here you're going to have over 100 milliseconds of delay on a really good day if their internet connection is good. This means if you need to chain 10 calls together to acquire all the data you need, not even counting server and client time spent, 
you are you are at at least a second, meaning you are probably looking at more like two or three seconds. And that's assuming you don't have one of your P99 calls in there that pauses because of some garbage collector somewhere that causes an extra 250 milliseconds. It all gets worse though, as throughout all of this, you have sent more data than you needed to the front end. Each of those requests returned more data than they needed for displaying on the dashboard, causing more time, pausing, uh, parsing data, and even wasting memory. Now, what is the solution to this? Well, it's quite simple, really. Making an API just for this page, just for the data you need. It might look something like this that returns just the information you want and need to render this page specifically. This then brings us to the Intercooler JS blog post. We can kind of understand where they're coming from because most of us have found ourselves supporting these front end back end services, these REST adjacent data APIs. And this is what Intercooler JS is talking about when it calls out API churn, as maintaining these front end only endpoints is a lot of effort, as they have a tendency of changing a lot. This means that if the front end wants to change the data that it's displaying, you also have to change the back end, as now you have tightly coupled the two things. Wait, but you still haven't talked about state belongs on the back end. I know, Moira, this is my point, but just be patient, we are getting there. The solution to this API churn? Well, it's 1000% GraphQL. That's, that's a no brainer, that's given. It solves it perfectly and elegantly. This lets front ends build their own API. The only problem with this is if a front end can do it, so can your users, meaning that your users can build their own queries to your data. The issue here is one explained really well by the blog, is that th this fundamentally means your complexity grows with every bit of new data as you are required to have access control on all your data at the field level, not at the route level, because users can build their own queries. Intercooler gives a fantastic example here, and I encourage you to go read their blog post. But my point is, it's hard to do, and it's even harder to do right all the time, and there have been a lot of examples, I mean a lot of examples, of it not being done right in production. And it's actually quite difficult to keep up with because each new field requires authorization at the field level. So any new data you have, has to, this has to be considered. Other than this absolutely massive black hole of never ending auditing your authorization at the field level, it's absolutely amazing. It completely solves the API churn as you never have to write a new API again in your life. All you have to do is just make sure that you maintain field level authorization on any new data that is available to it. There are many places that have made this work. GitHub is a really good example and they have a pretty awesome GraphQL API and it's actually pretty nice. But let's be serious, not all of us can afford to GraphQL. Not only is it expensive to run and operate, but complicated to set up and design properly. So what is Intercooler JS's fix for this issue? Intercooler, of course. Intercooler is made by Big Sky Software. Oh, I've heard that before. Wait, why are we talking about Intercooler? I thought we were talking about HTMX. It says here that Big Sky Software are the people behind HTMX. Right, exactly. Intercooler was V1 of HTMX. HTMX V1. I mean, they put it right here on the front page. It's not my opinion, it's, it's theirs. Wait, I thought, what? This is what HTMX solves? Exactly. So now that we've talked about latency earlier, well, there is another way to combat latent networks, and that is optimistic rendering. It's a simple concept, but if the front end is complicated enough, it can get messy very, very quickly. Optimistic rendering depends on storing state in a front end cache. Let's say you create a new ticket on a JIRA board, and instead of waiting to get the confirmation from the back end server that it's been saved, you can go ahead and show it on the front end. This makes it feel instantaneous. I mean, it is instantaneous. It does not matter if there is a two second network delay. And this, this is state on the front end and you have to manage it and it's a pain in the If it does not solve the location of data storage, does it at least solve the API churn? The TLDR is no, I don't think that it does. <laughs> HTMX, in my opinion, does not really solve this in any way. But before we dive into that, I actually, while I don't find it solving the problem that I have, I actually wanna dive into why I find HTMX exciting. 
I think the web has gotten into a stale place where they, we have these things and we just use them and it's kind of terrible, but everybody's gotten good at the kind of terrible. We're kind of at a place where we understand how to do the thing even though it's not great. HTMX is one of the first unique attempts to solve this in a clean way. You see other projects starting to copy them like Next's new server components that are effectively the same thing as HTMX. While I don't like that and I, and I think that it doesn't actually solve the problem at hand, I think it's a very novel way to try and solve the problem. And I'm really excited to see the future of it. The whole reason I'm making this video is so that we can learn, we can understand, and maybe some of you can create the next new HTMX thing that's gonna really, really make a difference and solve this issue. Let's look at an HTMX example I cooked up. Now, we can talk about how HTMX will require you to make an RPC-style REST HTML endpoint, but that is a rant for another day and another reason I'm not a big fan. Let me know in the comments if you would like to actually see that. I can live stream it. Anyhow, here, let's change these buttons to be flipped so that the logout is now on the left side. No data is changing here, but because these buttons were put here because of a call to the backend finding that you were not logged in, to change this would require a change in the backend API. This means that HTMX has actually added to your API turn because in normal front ends, this would be solely on the front end. You wouldn't have to change your backend as well. But some could argue that this is easier to understand and locate the API call that you're looking for. That is just the thing. You would still need an API to get the real data from. And if your front end developers are making this HTMX thing, they would still need to learn those APIs, those REST APIs, and where to get them. Making this no cleaner than the pure data equivalent API and no harder for a team to maintain. In fact, the location of these buttons would never be in the backend state. So for me, Malik, I think the answer is a resounding no. Not only this, I think you give up a well-designed API to only increase your API churn, not decrease it. Maybe it solves the, uh, the issue of front-end engineers not knowing what APIs to call to get their data. Again, no, even this back-end API would have to call some back, uh, another back-end API to get the data. You would still need to know where that came from, whatever database or service or API. This does not solve this problem either. Let's be honest. The only reason you don't like HTMX is because there's no good example in Rust. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. You, you all know that HTMX would explode if there was an easier way to make an HTML backend in Rust with good examples. Just, just joking. Anyhow, want to know what gets worse? You want to support an iPad or an Android tablet, you could have maybe used the HTML endpoints, but really this is not a viable option. Uh, not only are they jammed packed with rendering data that your front end client can't really e use easily, but they are also in HTML, very inconvenient to parse on front end clients or CLI applications. Uh, let me tell you, we have been doing some of that and it's not it's not a lot of fun. Let alone these API requests lead you to believe they are for specific things that happen on the front end, making them hard to leverage outside the context of your front end application state. Does this mean that you can't make wonderful web applications with HTMX? No, you absolutely can. And if you love it, I'm not trying to sway you to stop using it. But it's not my cup of tea as it brings a very prescriptive way of doing things that forces me to write at least two APIs, one in HTML for the website and one in JSON for the HTML endpoint as well as everything else to use. Now, just because I don't like something does not mean that you can't love it and that you can't build rich interactive front end applications with it. You can. It's just objectively bad, that's all. I'm joking, I'm joking. Obviously, there are a lot of angles to this. I tried to keep it short and fun and informative. If you would like a longer form essay style of work on, on this specific topic, please let me know and I can make it. Again, I'm not discouraging you from using a tool you love. If you love it, go for it. All I thought was it was a unique opportunity to talk about a subject and so I took it. So what do you think? Am I missing something? I did not even cover all the things I dislike about it, like the increased payload from the server and other issues that I have specifically with it. I just tried to talk about 
the main premise of what it was trying to solve. Do you feel like you're turning your API less with HTMX? I would love to know if you're heavily using it and you've gotten a good feel for this. Personally, I feel like I turn my API way more every single time I tried to use it. As with all things, if you did not like this video and think HTMX is the best thing since I started YouTubing, go ahead and hit that like button and see what else you can find to disagree with me on. Have yourselves a fantastic, wonderful week. Before I leave though, nice work actually seeing a problem and coming up with a unique solution, HTMX. I think it actually is a unique solution to the problem at hand. So nice job on that.